Hi, it's Mark from Top Local. We're here with Bernie Pollock, Pollock Automotive in Vancouver. We're talking cars. How are you doing today, Bernie? Doing well. So BMW 328D, a D, uh, X Drive. What was going on with this car? So this vehicle was brought to our shop. Um, the uh, the owner had been uh, servicing it at the BMW dealer, his local dealership, and they uh, there was an issue with it. It was running kind of funny, like lacking power shaking misfiring what it is what it felt like and uh it's a diesel and they basically said they didn't know what else to do with it and recommended they take it to a diesel specialist okay wait a minute like the dealer didn't know how to fix the brand's car where they have the experts factory trained etc etc blah 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 we're the best at fixing this car they couldn't fix the car yeah, exactly and you know this isn't the only time we've seen this. I mean, this is the first BMW we've seen like this. But we had a uh, we had actually same week we did, we did this repair last week. We had a Jeep Grand Cherokee diesel. Uh, we have the same thing with a lot of these uh, Jeep diesels where the dealers can't uh, they don't really have the expertise to fix it. Um, I think I think the thing about dealerships people don't realize they tend to cherry pick their work. They're they're in, they're into making profit. It's a good thing if a business. But you know what? When you buy a vehicle, it's a little bit outside of the. Uh, normal edge you can expect that kind of service from a dealer where they may not be actually able to to figure out what's going on with the vehicle unless it's something simple and and in all fairness it was a little it was a little complex uh in terms of you know there was no plug the scan tool in and figure out what was going on with it there was no information around that but still you know any decent technician i mean they should stand behind their products and their work and and uh, you know and charge accordingly to, to fix it so what tests and diagnosis did you do on the vehicle so of course, our first thing with with pretty well any diagnostic like this is road test a vehicle, get a feel for for the concern. We we did that. Then next, plugged our scan tool and did a full vehicle code scan and found nothing. There was no no codes in the engine module, uh, nothing in the drivetrain. So at that point, it was kind of a little bit interesting. Okay, what 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 could it be? So we drove it around a little while longer and um, and kind of intuitively, my, myself and my other lead technician, we drove around you know quite a lot. Kind of a, you know, I, I had a sense it felt like it could possibly an engine misfire, but it also had a feeling like there could be something with the drivetrain, like something in the either transmission or transfer case or something that was causing it to buck and shift and do do some weird things. So that's kind of what we're at. We're kind of left with a feeling of uh, what what it might be. Okay, so that's where the thirty eight years of experience comes into play. Um, no conclusive data to make a decision on, but basically intuition. Um, what were your next steps? Yeah, so our next steps, of course, are uh, research. Um, of course, the dealer, you know, had had already faced this problem, and they they had no, you know, they had no suggestion other than take it somewhere else. Um, there's a lot of information online. We we have a lot of resources. We pay subscriptions for uh, repair information programs that have a lot of of good repair information and networked. I say network like other technicians who may have found issues who who post repairs. We did a little research there. Then our, our diagnostic scan tool also comes with a, a team of. Uh, it's it's a European scan tool. They have a whole team of of. Um, technical resources uh, people where we can send in the data files, we can get information from them. So when you, when you come to our shop, this is the kind of thing that, that you get with a lot of the cars that we service. We, we have those resources that are, you know, really the kind of thing you'd expect only from a dealership. Well, actually in, our, in, in a way ours is better because we actually, we actually have resources. So we, we sent the file in, talked with, talk with a technician who suggested possibly a transfer case issue. So our next step was basically to unhook the transfer case. It's electronically controlled, road test a vehicle, sure enough, drove perfectly well, the issue was gone. So the tra clear conclusion, the transfer case was defective. So what's involved in repairing the transfer case? Well, basically this is a, this is a replace the unit only type of job. So we, we uh, bought a transfer case from BMW. Uh, not certain it was remanufactured or brand new. It certainly looked brand new and we uh, took it out of the box, but uh, uh, they do charge a kind of hefty core charge, but nonetheless, it's, it's an OEM spec BMW transfer cases. There's, there's a lot of electronic controls on these things. And uh, so that's, uh, that was basically the replacement. It's not, a, not an entirely difficult job. It fortunately, you know, is, few hours work, but fairly straightforward to, to unbolt, bolt back in. And, and uh, then there's some electronic, there's some programming that needs to be done to encode the transfer case to the vehicle, which uh, again, again, not overly comp, you have to have the right tools and, and data files, but uh, again, not overly complicated and, and it worked fantastic. So, so there's the uh, nice 328 uh, D X drive. Again, this is a diesel. 
Um, and a four wheel drive and a four wheel drive. Yeah. And that's, that adds, you know, adds some complications. So, I mean, all wheel drive is great, but it certainly adds complexity. There are some vehicles uh, where I find that uh, the all wheel drive really doesn't create any extra costs. And that Subaru is certainly one of them, but a lot of European cars, there, there, there are issues. Um, so this is the transfer case. This is the view of the transfer case that, that actually bolts up to the transmission end. So this would be the, the drive output to the front axle shaft or the front drive shaft. And then this is a view of the rear end of it. So this goes to the rear drive shaft. This is the, there's, a, there's an electronic module, a control unit on the bottom of this thing. So there's the, the plugs underneath there. Fortunately for diagnostic purposes, it wasn't too difficult to access them and, and unplug them and plug them back in. It, you know, that is a, you know, a piece of the transfer case. It, it obviously comes with the unit. So what's inside is probably fairly straightforward, but you never know what these kind of things are. You know, they're, they're not the, uh, your sort of uh, American style four wheel drive transfer case where it just locks gears together. These, these allow for, you know, smooth, uh, they allow for slippage under certain conditions. So you have, you, so you don't feel like your the vehicle doesn't bind when you're going around corners, but of course, sometimes things go wrong like they did in this case. So when you unhooked it, was it just it was running as a straight pass through or just running um, the rear wheels, just driving the rear wheels? I imagine that that's what was happening. I can't really say for certain, but um, all I can say is that that bucking and, you know, that, that strange power loss and all those I issues that we were experiencing was gone. So it was something I would imagine there were some clutch packs inside the transfer case that were engaging and disengaging at times that they weren't supposed to, you know, causing the vehicle to shudder and do you know strange things and that could have been as a result of that electronic module or you know just sending the wrong signals or something you know with a, a worn out clutch pack or something like that is this a common issue on x drive bmw cars so the the owner of this vehicle fortunately had an extended warranty and, and this particular warranty we deal with a lot of extended warranty companies this company uh, was insistent on sending an inspector over to have a look at it to to verify that we'd diagnosed the right thing and that they were spending their money, the customer's money wisely. So uh, we, you know, took them out, drove, drove it around and plugged the module. He was verified. He was happy with our diagnosis and, and said that they, they actually, he said, oh yeah, we see this problem all the time. According to the dealer I bought the transfer case from, I returned the, the core unit. He said, oh, we hardly sell any of these things. It's kind of surprising. So different opinions, but um, it seems like it's a common enough problem. So if you own one of these vehicles, you can expect, uh, you know, Probably a transfer case repair at some, possibly at some point in the history of the vehicle. So I imagine that the owner was pretty happy to have an extended warranty. What was the mileage on this vehicle? It was only 62,000 kilometers. So still, still a youngster. You know I mean, very low mileage. I mean, kind of think, well, you know, when you're up to 150 or 200 Ks, maybe that would happen. But 62 is pretty young and the vehicle is a 2014. So it's only five years old. So not, not really very old. Yes, yeah, so I, would, I would imagine he was very happy to have that. Certainly more than paid for the uh, more than paid for the price of the warranty with just this one repair job. And, you know, I'm often sort of sit on the fence with extended warranties. Sometimes I think, well, they're not worth it. You know, certain cars like, a, you know, a lot of Honda products, for instance, they've, you know, in Toyotas, they proved to be exceptionally reliable and having something like this go wrong with a, a car like that would be very unusual. But, you know, with a lot of European cars, these are, there's so many fancy expensive things that, that, you know, they are, it is worth most of the time having an extended warranty. And this is a diesel without a lot of miles, not necessarily what we would recommend people to buy. Um, but it, how are these BMW diesels for reliability? Well, I'll be honest, we, we, don't, we have very few clients with them because uh, they're just not very common cars, which explains why the dealer is even saying, well, you know, take it somewhere else because even, even they don't have a lot of experience. When you look at the lineup of BMWs, there's very few diesels around. We, we have serviced a few. They've, they've tended to be fairly reliable so far, but all of them have been pretty low mileage. And, you know, I say to say it, but, you know, they are a European diesel. There's a lot of stuff that goes wrong with Volkswagen diesels, a lot of stuff with Mercedes. So given time, things will go wrong with this vehicle. I mean, certainly the gas mileage is, you know, fantastic. And uh, there's a lot, there's a lot of good features about it, but I think uh, it's the kind of vehicle you probably don't want to hang on to for too long. Uh, lest there be some very expensive repairs down the road. But so far, you know, we haven't run into too many issues with, with them. It might be a car that if you were driving, for instance, 100,000 kilometers a year and doing a lot of highway driving, it might be a fantastic vehicle for that. But driving around town, maybe not the best choice. 
Exactly. Yeah. I will say that with diesels, you know, they got to be hot. They got to be, you know, they, they really hot and driving a lot is, is good for it. Anything else, you know, short trips, definitely not the best for a diesel. Not good at all. So there you go. If you're looking for service and the dealer doesn't know what to do, the guys to see are Pollock Automotive. You can reach them at 604-327-7112. It happens more often than you think. And of course, PollockAutomotive.com is a place to check out. Over 650 articles on there about all makes and models of vehicles and repairs. Pollock Auto Repair is the channel on YouTube and there's many hundreds of videos on there talking about the same thing. And of course, thanks so much for listening to the podcast and watching. We really appreciate it. Thanks, Bernie. Thank you, Mark. And thank you for watching.